G'day everyone, welcome back to another sunny Saturday morning here at Steve's Place Down Under in Sydney, Australia. I'm Steve and if this is your first time watching what we do, what I do here is we start all these old sort of things up. We restore some of them, we just get them going, talk about them. Trucks, earth movers, uh, what I've got of earth movers, I've got a couple of old days, a few old excavators and stuff like that. Farm tractors, I've got a lot of those and just old engines in general so I try and collect them all, preserve them. Um, whatever goes with doing it in the time that I've got. Sort of just went to work this morning, being Saturday morning, went and fixed a couple of things and that brought me up to 70 hours a week so you can just see the time that we have got. So I've got the rest of whatever's Saturday and tomorrow being Sunday but it's Father's Day. So I had a lot of requests um, last week to start it up the green echo behind me. If none of you saw that and you're interested, go back and have a look at that. And that's a V8 345 petrol in that. They've seen this one in the background and I give a brief brief description on, on what was in it and if anyone would be interested in seeing it start. So the reason they wanted, wanted it started is because I mentioned that it had a uniflow two cycle scavenge type diesel in it. So it's a two stroke five cylinder made by Nissan Diesel. Well, I'll give you the brief history of that in a minute. But, um, that's what it's got in it, and I don't even think they made it to America, so a lot of you blokes may not have even heard of them. So, it's in a 71 model, 1971 model International ACO, uh, twin steer bogey drive, so we call these eight wheelers here in Australia. We class each wheel as a, uh, each, bogey, each, each dual set is, is one wheel here in Australia, so you've got twin steers and then tandem drive, so that's an eight wheeler we call them. ACO, this is an A-double-C-O, the earlier ones were A-A-C-O, again if you didn't see last week, A-A-C-O is Australian A-line cab over and A-C-C-O is Australian C-line cab over and they were the later ones and up until even current now, they still call that, I've echo in them now but I won't give a history of the truck, I'll do a, I'll do a uh, echo uh, episode by itself. These diesel engines, if you haven't heard of them, I'll, I'll run through a brief history but in 1935, there was a company called Nihon Diesel Industries was formed. <clears throat> they started to produce a series of diesel engines, KD1 series diesel engines, and they were two stroke two. And I don't think they were super, well, call them supercharged. I don't think they were blown because these ones were the first of the blown ones. So I think they just worked off reed valves, just like your hedge trimmer or your line trimmer or your whipper snipper, we call them here. So pressurised crankcase and I'd, I'd say to just inject the diesel into when that air was compressing just like a petrol would but not draw a fuel mixture in. I think that's how they worked. So they, they started producing those and then put them into little trucks and once proven they started producing them. Those engines they bought the, the drawings or the schematics off a mob called Krupp Junkers which is it's if you've seen it written you would say Junkers but it's I think in English we pronounce it Junkers which is they made uh, aircraft in World War II, I guess for the Luftwaffe, but German aircraft in World War II. So if you've heard of Junkers or Junkers aircraft, I think that's where they, they bought this, these schematics from and started to produce them themselves. And that was Nihon I Industries. And over the years, they changed names until they formed a company called Minze Diesel Industries. That was in 1946 and they were still producing the uh, transport equipment and it was growing and <laughs> anyway in 1955 the UD name was born UD meaning Uniflow Diesel um, Uniflow scavenge diesel which means Uniflow is it, it's it's blown in and out just like a Detroit with with one one flow so you've got a you've just got a normal like, like the Detroit exactly the same pretty well You've got exhaust valves and you've got you've got your inlet is halfway down the cylinder wall. It's got a series of ports around the bottom of the liner. So when the piston comes down, it uncovers those ports and, and the, the, the blower blows it all through and the exhaust valves are open. So when that piston comes back up, blocks those ports off and, and, and then you've got a cylinder full of clean air. When it goes bang, comes back down and just before the piston opens those ports up the exhaust valve starts opening. 
and then once it once the exhaust valves are open, it keeps coming down, and then that that pressurised air around that cylinder from that supercharger or the blower blows the exhaust gases out, and then the process repeats. So when it comes back up after after that's still blowing out through the exhaust, exhaust valves close, and then the cylinder traps off those ports, and then it's full of clean air again. Then it just repeats that cycle up and down. So it, it's firing every time. Seen supercharger on the title. That's that is sort of true, it was more, more of a clickbait thing to be honest, but it is a supercharger, but on these they're not known as superchargers because if you've got an engine that, these basically won't run without it, neither will the GM. It's arguable, blokes will say they run, but they, all they do is cough and fart and they don't, they, don't, they, they, won't, they won't perform by any means. So these are basically naturally aspirated even though they've got a blower because it, it, the, the cycle requires that blower. They're called superchargers when you put it on something it would already run without it. Um, so like the video I've done with Dave Willis from Dave Old Rigs Down Under, um, you might have seen we've done a supercharged Cummins. That engine will run without it. So that is, that is forced induction. It, it was designed with lower compression for that supercharger, but still it will run without it. Superchargers, you can get them off these trucks or 671s, 871 Detroits, and you can put them on all those race cars and, and old hot rods and that, and that's when they become supercharged, because then you, rather than the engine drawing in its own air, which it usually would, it's uh, when that inlet valve opens up, there's pressurized air in there, and the more air you can get into a cylinder, the tighter you squeeze it, it it's the bigger bang you're gonna get if you've got the right fuel with it. So again, it's supercharged, but the, you call them really, a, they're more, more a scavenge blower on these. So they just, just scavenge the old exhaust air out and fill it with clean air ready for another bang. So I think another one of the reasons these are so noisy too is because that, that bang is still happening. With a four stroke, the piston's going down. It's not until the, it starts changing direction that it exhausts, but these these are going bang, but it's, it's, it's basically opening roughly halfway down so it's still going bang when that when that valve opens that's i think that's why they're so noisy plus you've got the blower forcing them out these were known as japanese jimmies or hiroshima screamers um, they designed there was a ud3 a ud4 ud5 ud6 ud8 and a ud12 which means uniflow scavenge diesel and then the number of cylinders the 8 and 12 are V-type engines and they are all the same, say you got a Detroit, you got 671, 871, 171, 271, whatever it is, they're all the same, they just kept adding cylinders to them. These work the same, same cubic inch per cylinder, same bore diameter, same stroke, everything across, across that range of engines. These engines were produced for their light to heavy duty range of trucks and buses. Um, Right up till I think 1960, they were bought out by Nissan Motor Company and formed Nissan Minz AD. Diesel Industries was bought by Nissan Motor Company, and then that 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 particular branch became Nissan Diesel Motor Company. So right up till now, you can get a Nissan Diesel truck. So the exact year they stopped producing these, I don't know. Um, so basically, if if you ever see You've, you've probably often wondered why, a, a, even even today, a bloke buying a brand new uh, Nissan diesel truck will have a badge with UD on the front in a circle. Probably a red circle on the earlier ones. I think the late ones are just the chrome badge. But you probably wondered what UD meant when it's on. It, it, you probably think it should be ND for Nissan diesel or whatever the, whatever you thought. But that goes way back to uh, 1953 when they started designing these Uniflow diesels before it was even Nissan Diesel Motor Company and they kept the badge even if you go down to down the road here to the Nissan Diesel the Japanese truck dealers down here that the, the, the newest model today in 2023 will have a UD badge on it it's nothing to do with the the Nissan diesel itself, it, it's from these old Uniflow scavenge diesels. So if you ever see a UD badge on the front of a new truck, it means Uniflow diesel or Uniflow scavenge diesel. So that's what it means. Even though they're four strokes, they just kept the old, you've probably seen it, even a Series 60 has got the two Detroit, the, the, the old emblem is two, two arrows, which is the two cycle emblem on, on the Detroit, but that's still on their latest four stroke stuff. So that's what it means if you see a 
a, a, a UD badge on a new truck. The differences, I don't know a lot about them. I've played with a lot of Detroit stuff, but I've only got one of these. These are getting fairly rare now. The, I think the difference is they've still got the exhaust valves, they've still got the ports around the side of the, the cylinder. Um, two stroke for you people that don't know, it doesn't mean you pull up at the servo and you, you've got to put a 25 to 1 mix in each fuel tank. That's, that's not how that works. They're still pressure fed bearings with a normal sump like any other engine, like any Detroit, any Perkins, any, any car. The difference of these is where a Detroit diesel's got a unit injector run off a third load on the uh, third lobe on the mother stick or the camshaft. These have only got exhaust valve lobes, and it's got a inline injector pump. Like a, the, being Japanese, it's diesel kiki, but just like a Bosch style inline injector pump. Um, diesel kiki is still it's on all your all, all your Isuzu stuff, probably not on the uh, common rail stuff, but certainly the old mechanical injection pumps are mostly diesel kiki on Japanese stuff. This one being a five cylinder, that's a bit different housing. Um, again, an odd number of cylinders, puts it aside from the GMs as well. It's a four stroke engine, um, your injector pump, or a four stroke diesel engine, your injector pump will spin with camshaft speed or half the speed of the crankshaft, which will give you an injection on every, on your, every second revolution, but these, the injection pump spins at crankshaft speed, so it's it's firing every time. Every every time that piston gets gets up, not obviously not top dead centre, but before it, it will give it a shot. So that's 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 the other difference. Still got the same root style blower or supercharger on it. They call blowers again on these scavenge pumps, basically. Um, same, exactly the same. I'll I'll give you a gimbal look at the engine in a minute. Um, this particular one here I haven't started, I'll put a photo up here that mate of mine, Bill, you've probably seen me take his, his truck out when I got the 46 Ford and the Renault tractor and all those side valves. He picked it up for me on his float um, many, many years ago and we started it up that afternoon and that, that was, I haven't been back near it, so it ran really good but the bottom Show you. The, the, the bottom is broke. They've they got a the, the bottom hose goes into the engine oil cooler, and, and that actual casting is snapped. I think it may have had something to do with all this damage here. Someone's pushed it with a tractor, which I cannot stand. Not a bad old cab apart from that, but I'd say whatever's pushed that has hit that bottom neck and broke it off. So I might just try and plug it with rags and just put some water in just to lubricate the pump. We'll just run it long enough where she just gets a bit of warmth to her and and um, just see, see what happens and we'll shut her off. But uh, it's probably been seven years, maybe. Um, I think it's 24 volt from memory. I'll, again, I'll check all that out off camera. I don't remember if it needed ether. It's got a drum of a drum sitting on the seat with just a hose going into it, so we'll run it off that. These engines in Australia, I'm not sure how many trucks I actually come out in, but they were, they were a big repower option back in the 60s and 70s. So when your Perkins or your V8 petrol or gases, as you American blokes call them, when they wore out, they'd slip one of these into it or a, or a little V8 Cat or a little V8 Cummins or something and, and repower these medium duty trucks. <coughs> they were brought out, these engines, in a... We had a, we had a company here called Upton Engineering, U-P-T-O-N Engineering, and they made a series of tractors and to this day, I think they're still, they, they still make the world's biggest, most powerful two-wheel drive tractor to date. I think that one there had a 14-litre Cummins in it. And they, and they also used, they used these, they were made with Nissan diesel or UD engines, two-stroke engines from factory, um, along with other engines like Scania and whatever the range was and what, whatever power they needed. I think they used one, one of them had a V8 Scania in it, which would be magnificent. I've seen one at a tractor pull, and boy, oh boy, was it noisy! Like, it, it just seemed—it seemed so much louder than a, a, a GM. It was just you wait for it to fly to bits. But I think it was an old five-cylinder. It was an odd number, anyway. It was a three or five or something, fairly big, sort of hundred horsepower style tractor. This particular one in this is, I think, 190 horsepower. I know the six cylinders about 220 or something like that but again a lot lighter than a 671 so power to weight is, is a lot more basically they were also used in um, 
There's a machine called a scrape dozer, which I actually floated one. You don't, I've never seen any around apart from these two, but I floated one in that old Flintstone Mac we had at work. It used to be our main float truck. I used to do all the float work years ago, me and another bloke. They've since retired that and moved on the later model things. But I actually floated it in 2009 to a show we had just up the road here, our first tractor show we had at, at, in our club. It was a scrape dozer, so what it was was two tracks just like your normal flat track bulldozer or or excavator. It was probably more like an excavator, it might have been a hydrostatic drive, I can't even remember, but it had, it was two of them. So it was two two tracks and then it had like an open bowl scraper between the tracks and you sat above it and you operated this machine and it, it was a good weekend, we all had a go at it and they were old dozers and this was way before cameras and I probably didn't even have a phone then. The one I, the, so one had a, a UD8 in it, which was a Uniflow diesel V8. So you can imagine the noise that thing made, but that one there wasn't running. So I, I brought the one had a four stroke V8 in it, which is an R RD8, I think. That had a four stroke Nissan diesel V8 in it, and that was the one we brought to the show because it was running. I, I didn't hear the other one go, but it just. I can only imagine how it would have sounded because the four stroke was good. So I floated that one to the show, we had to play with it, but I don't know, leave in the comments, but I don't know anything else that they were in. I don't think they made it to America. But they'll certainly more used as a repower option here. You hear of a lot of old Accos and Fords and, and you know, early trucks like that with a minimum. So um, that was, uh, they, I believe they were cheap to import and, and, and like cheap to buy and import. So. It was a fairly good option. Um, I don't know if they mounted up with the gearboxes and these old things. This one's got to looks like a five speed, but I haven't looked into what it is, whether it's an old fuller out of the Akko that it would have had, or whether it's a, a if it's a Japanese box, it's probably synchro mesh. I've never driven it. Um, only had it running for a minute or so. So what I'll do now, I'll, um, it's just a brief history of them. Not a lot of it on, uh, on YouTube, so hopefully it does well, so. Um, what I'll do now is I'll get the gimbal and I'll, I'll show you around the engine inside the cab and then we'll, we'll set to work at starting her up. I might pull her out a bit away from these other two Akos and get the front of her out a bit and we'll just uh, get, get better footage of it, see it running from, from, from back a bit. Again, this is an old butter box we call them here in Australia um, for the, that unique look of the cab. Twin steer, the old girl, so she's an eight-wheeler, sort of... Uh, Sort of 30,000 pound Rockwells, I'd imagine, being, a, being an old Perkins or a V8 petrol truck. It's a C1800, so the, the 1900s had the uh, 185 V8 Cummins and the uh, 5B3. It's still a twin stick, this old one. She's got a three speed Spicer in her. You can see her there, and, and a five speed. I don't know what that is, I haven't even looked into it. See the muffler on her, She's, she comes in in one side and then goes out the other so what that'll do in there is crisscross to just try and quieten it down so she's probably going through that muffler twice and uh and that's probably i'm not going to take it off at the moment that but that could be a patreon or members episode where we'll, where we'll take that off and then give her another shot you just imagine sitting in this old tin cab with no insulation whatsoever so that back wall is is the is what you see here, there's nothing in those old Akos. The roof line was just glued to the roof. So here she is. Oh, let me get up into her. There's that broken uh, off the off the bottom of the oil cooler. The cast is actually broken, so what I do there, I don't know. It's not really going to matter. Oh. Someone's been in here. Bloody one of them... One of them nests. She's on that side too, look. Here she is. Nissan Diesel. You can see it written on there. Again, these were these were made by Minzo Diesel. And then Nissan acquired the, uh, the, the company or bought the company off them and started Nissan Diesel. And just, I guess they kept making them and put their brand on it. But um, Again, inline pump, Diesel Kiki. Let's run off the timing gears at the back of the pump. Diesel Kiki, five cylinder. Fairly similar, similar to look at and tap, tap a cover style. I've never had that off, never had to. Got your butterfly nuts there. Um, Foreign oil is written on the top of it. 
go around the other side and show you the blower. You see the rough bloody gear stick come through the back of the cab. You imagine trying to drive this like them super truckers these days with that ridiculously high gear stick. Maybe she was a super trucker, who knows? And then there's a Joey stick there. You nearly have to nearly have to get out of her and turn round to reach the thing to change. There she is there. Go around the other side here and shows the blower in it. I don't know who made the blowers in these, whether it was a Wade or a, I'm not sure. Still a screw type blower or um, root style. Down under that manifold, you look at that, look at that rear drop manifold there. Imagine how she'd sound out of that pullinard. Amazing. Got the common water rail along the top like a jimmy. Water pump mounted off the front of the blower. It obviously drives off the back timing gears just like a, a GM does. Fairly similar look at this side actually. Um, there's a fuel tank we'll have to sit a drum in here and we'll give her a shot. I'm sure it's 24 volt. It's a Japanese style air cleaner too, which you see on the earlier Isuzu and whatever, whatever those Japanese trucks are, is Mitsubishi. This and diesel, possibly come with it, whatever the engine may have been out of. There she is, the old eight wheeler, so I'm, I'm hoping to grow the channel to a point where I can maybe have a year or two off work. Um, I'm still a long way off that, but while my dad's still healthy and able, when he retires, I'd like to, in 12 months' time or whatever it's going to be, I'd like to, I'd like to spend a couple of years with him in the shed. And this will be the first restoration project. This one, along with a couple of others that are up there already. I'd like to, I will take this engine out. I won't run it. I'll just leave it on a stand and sort of a, as a museum piece or just a start thing up for up in the shed. Might even sit it on one of the trucks and start it at shows, but. I have got a, I'm going to make it C1900 spec, which is full air. Um, I've got a 210 V8 Cummins up there, so I don't know if I'll put a 600 series 10 speed Road Ranger in it or a, I'd like to keep it twin stick 5v3, but I'll see if I can get a gearbox to made up with that 210 and the 5 speed. I've got full air axles for it over, over the back there. I just need one more steer axle because I've got a six wheeler chassis I started doing up and, and um, I thought no I want to put this effort into an eight wheeler. I've got a pristine 71 model cab up in the shed there, it's just like brand new. Which I will uh, put on her and she'll be chassis up rebuild this one so that's what I'd like to grow the channel to. So if, if you are all keen to see that happen please help me share, subscribe, like, um, share with your friends that may, may be interested in some of this stuff. and. New range of merchandise coming out, which my partner's going to put up photos of. I'm pretty excited about that. It's really good. Just to help get the name out there a bit, and we're starting a Patreon. I know I don't want to ask anyone for money, but if a few of you do like to, like to support me and um, like what I do here, it does cost a bit and to do this. Um, that will be much appreciated. That's not up and running yet, but if anyone's interested in that, it's not much. It just gives me a bit more incentive to, to keep going. As I said, it's a long week and I'm trying to fit these videos in. But if you are interested in this content, please go back and check some of my other videos out too. I've put a lot, a lot of effort in there and some of them haven't got many views at all. Whether they're getting shared or not, I don't know. But there's a lot of this stuff available if anyone else is interested. Okay, my dad's bringing the tractor down. We'll just, we'll just pull her out a bit so we can just get it Bit, bit better on camera. That's about the only reason for that.
see what we can do. Okay, put some fuel in this, this big tank here. I'll go and get one out of the dozer, it's got one in yeah. it. Got that loader, so you don't have to go as far. I think I'm getting some in it, Tom. I hope so. It's too expensive now to worry. Yeah, I know. Okay, I have to bleed her up. I won't be reusing that again and probably mixed in with a bit of that stale stuff that's left. fuel tank. Okay, I'm just going to bleed the fuel up in her. Just crack this here. Don't know what that filter's like, but it probably won't matter for what we're going to do. This is the line that goes to the injector pump. We'll get her up to there first. Whack her off here. There she goes. Save your comments for dripping on the grass. I couldn't care less. A lot of you seen to me about that before. It's got to be a gut load of here somewhere because of that line. But... It's a bit there. Feels fairly solid. I'll get her up in the injector pump now. Feels like it's not stuck wide open on the rack, but time's going to soon tell. You've still got to have a bit of air somewhere because she's going soft again. Still air coming out of there, but it could be coming out of that lift pump. The seals are leaking around the hand primer of that, so um, I'll leave it at that and we'll wind her over and see what she does. If not, we'll give her another go. Find a dipstick on her now. There she's out the front. I've we'll opened the bonnet up on her. Uh, check the oil in her. So we've had a special guest turn up today, Tom, family friend of ours, and we'll uh, oh, that. We'll wonder why she was holding so much oil, but he was looking for a leak and noticed a dipstick had worn through the tube and she's just going out into nowhere, so yeah, she's probably got too much in her, but we've seen that happen before. She must have been pulled out a few times over the years. Um, it's all just bent and flared now, we can't get it back down in there, but it's definitely got oil because I tipped about five litres in, and even without it moving, that's certainly going to cover the pickup. Okay, we're just going to see what the starter does here, see if she winds. If you ever need to take it off now, it might stick. Hey? 
Get ready to take one of them off, it might stick on. Okay. Not here. No power up there. Let's see. Not a start solenoid here on the side here, but probably probably bridge if I knew what was going on with. Switch here, would it be on or off? Oh, has it got a night switch, has it? Yeah. Let's try that. I forget some WD you got me here. Oh, and that pump bottle. Yeah, that's the one. Now I get into the chasm. That, that there is not a good. I don't know if it's. Not a real good connection there. Wouldn't be that. It'd be something before that spark. I'll tighten that up in a minute. All right, let's go. Put some water in the radiator. We've got it all blocked off with rag. It's going to run out underneath, but. That's all we can do, just to give her a go. Lubricate the water pump, I think. Jeez. Is it sparking or not? Okay, we've just cut all the wires off. We hooked the battery up and one of them started boiling or fizzing, so I cut the alternator circuit and the starter circuit so it's eliminated the dash and the alternator like something's shortened out. So I'll get you to check this. Now we're just going to put her into 24. And then see what she does. This one's not connected. I'll try to tighten it. Full ball of gas here. I just want one I can pull up. I want all of them. Just get out of the way. I don't like that one out there. Alright, after seven years. We'll see what she does. All those Aerostart cans on the floor, those ether cans, are worrying me a bit. But See what she does. You haven't got a beer, that's what no, problem. Need one, need a nervous one first. Alright, get rid of the choker if she runs off. No. Oh look, she doesn't like that. I think it was better on 12. Right. Put it back on 12. Right, here we go again. You got smoke. Quicker than that. 
the lead on the starter is getting hot. Smoke's coming out of the fucking starter. It is? Yeah. We'll go up in parallel, give it another. We've got plenty of smoke coming out of it. Way out of the top, out of the exhaust. We're blowing out the bottom here. Oh, it's a starter. It's not... No, it was not quite good. Come on. There's smoke built in the bottom of the starter. There is. Why would that be? Take that engine pipe off. In the dozer, maybe. You want to take that charge? Just with you. They both help. They started the dozer easy, yeah. didn't they? Yeah, maybe. Cooked it all, but there was one around that was dead, and I didn't toss it, so that's probably it. Just been down to get another battery, because that one only had eight volts in it, so that's why it was bubbling. I'd say it's internally short now. Um, we're going to try another one. This is. I took the load tester down. This has got it, so. Tomorrow's Father's Day, and I was going to start her up so I could have a listen to it and treat myself to a Father's Day uh, gift, but I thought if we can post it tonight, you can all have a Father's Day gift and listen to her. So, happy Father's Day to all you blokes as well. That it applies to. Might have a beer later for you. Oh, sure. I was nearly going to go up then when you were talking, but I thought, oh, well. I'll earn one getting it going. So, there wouldn't have been nothing wrong with the truck. It was the bloody. You reckon? Back. Well, it is. Okay. 24 volt now of two good batteries. You can't see that exhaust pipe, but I can't get the whole lot in. Oh, there it is there. That should do. All right, here we go. Take three. <sighs> watch that back. Watch them terminals in case yeah, you spoke. That's better. Right? Yep. Fucking dirty. What was that? St like it stayed in. Am I here? Can you reach through and just pull that fan over? Just a little bit? We'll try and tighten the belt. Keep it going here. Yeah. Always get hot. 
Good, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? Something up. This is a uh, not to be continued episode. Sort of staying in. Give it a good hit underneath or anything? Oh, that's what it needs, it's like. Hammer here. Doesn't want to play. Alrighty, so we're just up in the workshop here. We'll, we're trying to get the starter to work off camera. Um, just going click, 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 and then a, then it went poof and a puff of smoke whistled up the side of the engine, and she just kaput. No, no click after that. So I've got to pull the party. I think solenoid's working fine. That's only off 12 volt. I'm not sure if it's a 12 or 24 volt starter. I can still, I can see no identification on this thing at all at the moment. You can see possibly what's going on there. Those contexts are black, like it's been hasn't been contacting. What that does for the user who don't know it, when you click the throw your starter in this this lever here pulls the the pinion into the flywheel. Once the pinion's engaged in the flywheel, this crosses the power to the actual motor and spins it over. Not sure what it was actually doing though, it was sort of just clicking, you could hear the solenoid clicking. So whether the pinion wasn't engaging right into the flywheel and these weren't touching, I don't know. But why it went puff and the smoke, I don't know. I don't think it was out of this, because that's working. So I think the next thing to do is pull the motor apart. So my dad just said he's hungry, he just, I'm going to get a sandwich, Steve. And I thought, what a wonderful idea. So I went and got myself a sandwich. Get a quick one of these while I'm doing it. So, not overly sure what to expect with this. I'd say it'd be similar to everything else, but that's the problem. Even if it's 24 volt, I doubt I'd be doing that, but I could be wrong. Pop these bolts out of the back here and see what we can find. Oh, I might be able to stay there at the moment. I'll just take those out. She's turned into a bigger job than I thought. I thought the starter motor would be the least of her worries, but.
Only when a cloud of smoke comes out of an electric motor, it's not a good sign. If this doesn't work, there's no video. Well, it's half a one until I get it fixed. I can't put out the Father's Day edition. Still got to be coming out the holy. I don't know if that band, whether that's a clamp or what that does. Tom's gone home now, he was a good help, it was good to have him here. Now he's gone, we're back on our own here. I've never really dealt with a starter. I've seen these bands on them, and I don't think I've rebuilt one with it. And what they do, they cover up a, a vent or a... Yeah, right, eh? you get the brushes by the look of it. Oh, there's a, there's a, there's a blow mark there. Oh, shit, she's coming apart. Definitely a blow mark in her. Yeah. See where she's arced down the end there. I'm not sure if you can see in there. Probably not. I'll try to take that end cap off her. Just see, look. This all looks good apart from the, the contacts. I'll give them a clean. Maybe lube, lube up the bloody pinion. Throw out. I'd say what's happened, one of these are going to ground here somewhere. She got two that will go to ground and two that are power. But she's got a she's got a blow mark down there where it looks like it's been hitting one of the through bolts or something. Okay, so that's that's probably not an end cap. It just must get in through here. Okay, soon to get it working. Cleaned all the contacts in here. I didn't show it on just to save some footage. Pull all that apart, fold all the contacts. As you've seen, they were dirty, but I did find this. The end of this shaft that runs inside that end bush there is on a thread and what it did to lock that thread up there's a dowel pin there and it's sheared so what that did it, it undid it and when when this the inertia of kicking the starter in unwound it and it loaded the armature up against the back housing and just locked it solid so I think what the pop was, us trying to click, 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 trying to start it, and then it was just getting hotter and hotter, and it just found a weak spot and blew out. But that hasn't appeared to have hurt it. It's just blown that, that one spot out where it was hitting ground. So why it was hitting ground, I don't know. But but it was still, it still, it still works now. So only off 12 volt, but we'll go down and throw it back in and and see what happens. Put together a bit of a bit of a snack pack to take back down. It's probably going to take that many to get it going now. So, fantastic idea. I'm going to get underneath her and lift that in. Get up there and I'll hold it up there. What? Hi. Okay, here we go. Starter's back in, batteries are connected. I'll go around the other side and try and give her a go. I've just slightly repositioned the camera because of all the shade now. It's a bit, a couple of hours later. Left the reach down. Oh, I didn't connect the main bloody wire back up. Just reach down. Right? Yeah. Right? 
not good that thermal. Try that. I think she was turned off with that lever. There's like a trip in here. Right? Yeah. Yeah, you've got smoke down. She might need a bit of a sneeze just to help her. You've got smoke there. Watch that bleed. Right? Yeah. We're just going to use a bit of start your bastard down the neck of it just to save these batteries. By the look of what we found on the floor, there's more there's more bloody air start than beer tins. So. A bit of a sign she might have an addiction. Starts spraying it now. All right up. Okay. Did that run out, did it? Yeah. Oh, chamber. Here we go again. We got four, two more batteries hooked up. Series.
salty, wouldn't it? Oh, that frog will start. Oh, it probably is. Yeah. Yeah. Like oh, garden it might be a bit tight. Do you start? How do you start? Just hit it. Mate? We're just going to hit her again. You can see she had that distinct bloody Detroit sound, but even though it's not. probably hear that ticking noise come into it. The compressor's breathing through the air cleaner, which we've got taken off there at the moment. It was just because it was collapsed anyway. It was a way of stalling it if she sucked in. So let me know if you want to do a, a video with a muffler offer. That might be a, a members only edition. We'll see what happens. You see how responsive she is. Um, runs beautiful. There's no smoke at all. I think she's got an addiction to that ether though. So There you go. Happy Father's Day to all you blokes. Hope you like that. We can't run it too long because there's no water in it. Um, 
there won't be much more on this particular truck until, the, uh, unless we take that muffler off and give it a run, but there won't be any more on it until we start doing it up, which isn't yet, so please share with your friends who might like it. Click the like button because it helps YouTube recommend it to everyone else and um, check out the merchandise, the links down below somewhere in the dis uh, channel description or the channel page. That would be great and um, I hope you all like that. Thanks very much for watching.